Now, and more people are joining. <coughs> All right, so what happens is whole and complete. What, what apparently happens is just naturally everything. There is no, no mystical reality to it or no deeper reality. Um, what happens is not a mystery, basically. It's not a secret, it's not hidden. The natural reality is not hidden somewhere and has to be found or discovered. Uh, this would be part of the dream of separation. And of course, uh, within that dream, so to speak, it feels as if wholeness, completion, fulfillment, enlightenment, liberation, whatever you, whatever you call it or whatever it's called, is something over there, is something that I can't see, is something that exists in the first place, that there is something like personal fulfillment personal enlightenment and that it's somewhere hidden and or not here yet let's put it like this it's either somewhere hidden or it still has to come it still has to happen at some point in the future that's basically which is another over there it's not now here it's somewhere somewhere else that's where fulfillment is and um, as i said that's basically a part of the dream and of course, uh, the dream is not that fulfillment is somewhere else. Of course, this whole idea of personal fulfillment is part of the dream. So I'm not saying that everyone is already enlightened and that we should be happy and all that stuff. No, there's just no one separate. And yes, fulfillment is the natural reality. What happens is full and whole and complete but of course not as a personal experience. So there never is someone experiencing wholeness or experiencing completion. Also not now. I know that there are ideas around that everyone is already enlightened and stuff like that and we should tell this ourselves or we should, but there is no one basically. So this whole idea, this whole game around this idea of enlightened, not enlightened, fulfilled, unfulfilled, unhappy, I'm an unhappy me and I can become a, a, a happy me and a fulfilled me. This whole, this whole narrative is part of an illusion. And as I said, the illusion is that there is someone in the first place, that there is something like a separate individual. There just isn't one. So what we talk about is very simple. It, it already happens. It's impossible to get. It's not easy to understand or easy to be gotten. It's impossible to be gotten or impossible to be understood. But the simplicity is, that it's already the case. What we talk about is already the case, so to speak. And it's just this, it's just what apparently happens. Yeah, I'm done. So whoever wants, uh, to add something which would only be apparent, you are very welcome.
Okay, there's a <clears throat> question in the chat. Apparently, somehow sounds as if something is appearing and then disappearing, but that's not the case, right? So one could also say seemingly. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely true. Yes, yes. I know that's, yeah, that's how the person would understand it. And maybe that's even the correct use of that word. I don't know, but it's not that there is something appearing in terms of arising, really. That there, that there is an absolute reality and that then the real, the relative reality appears out of it or arises out of it. That would be kind of a process of manifestation. Sitting in front of a screen has appeared out of the natural reality or out of nothing or out of the truth or something. It's simultaneous, it's both. It is what apparently happens simultaneously. And, but uh, there's never a real process of coming into existence, exactly. So this is apparently, seemingly real and unreal. Yes, it's simultaneously real and unreal. Yeah, it's not unreal and it becomes real at some times or at some point. That's kind of something a concept that the person actually can go with because it is its experience that things come and go within its awareness it, it experiences this every day feelings come and go the weather changes everything seems to come and go for the person there is no coming and going of anything when the when the illusion of um, of uh, the person collapses, all those things seem to happen, but they never bring about this experience, this sense of that there are real things that are coming and going. Neither I am something that comes and goes, that wakes up in the morning and goes to sleep in the evening, or during the day, the switching, so there's uh, no one coming and going, and also the things aren't perceived anymore as things that are coming and going or that are existing. That's a funny thing that the spiritual idea that things are not real because they come and go, it's just a conclusion coming from, from a personal understanding. There's no connection to this message with this concept because nothing is coming and going. And staying, of course. Usually, usually there's always also something that stays. That's me. <laughs> That's the awareness. <clears throat> Probably not a question. Um, coming and going. Yeah. <laughs> well, only for you. <laughs> and I'm not allowed to say something like it's coming and going. Um, Zoe, seemingly, 
your sound is coming and going. <laughs> the microphone uh, uh, starts sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh no. Okay, there's a comment. I was trying to work out what was happening. Yes, all right, so. Ah, all right. Uh, <laughs> question, if you say the wrong thing, you will be arrested by the non-dual police. <laughs> no, of course, <laughs> no. <I laughs> Well, as far as I know, there is no such thing. At least that's what I hope. Now, <laughs> I, I just would have uh, uh, discussions going on. <laughs> that's all, you know. Yeah, Andreas, but you said there is no... Ooh. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay, question. So conditioning has nothing to do with anything or anyone. Uh, yes, exactly, yes. I mean, conditioning in that sense isn't real, but it just is what apparently happens. It doesn't belong to anyone. Yeah, yes. Apparently there is a conditioned body. And that's wholeness. But it can't be known, really. That's that's the thing. No one, uh, everyone just is who, how they are, but no one knows it really. So this illusion, well, that's how I am. Yes, I know I like chocolate or whatever. This story is dreamt, of course. There is no I knowing. Um, but there are preferences, seemingly. Yeah, but that's the thing, only seeming. Of course, that's what apparently happens. How everyone is, or how oneself, or how this is, is what apparently happens. And apparently there are preferences. But you can't really divide them. You know, it's just undivided. Everything is just happening undivided. And it's not that I know my preferences and that I act consciously according to my preferences they just happen my preferences are what happens my actions just are what apparently happens there's no one really doing this out of knowledge and that's basically i think what the what a lot of the person's life is about finding out what i like knowing what i like and uh, knowing what I don't like, and then try to create it, to, to live consciously according to that. Because of course the person thinks, for example, if my preferences becomes fulfilled, I'll be a more happy I. So that's, that's, uh, that's a way how the person thinks it can become, uh, live a fulfilled life. I mean, most people, they don't, uh, most uh, people don't look for enlightenment or fulfillment. They just think they have to live from moment to moment and get as much joy out from, from every moment, so to speak. So it's like try to consciously fulfill one's uh, ideas, hopes, desires, preferences, so to speak. I like this and I stuff like that. They look for a better experience, uh, basically, yes, exactly. Or for an experience that seems to promise something like 
to eat the chocolate cake and not whatever the vegetables or whoever whatever their preference the person thinks this gives them something if it does eat the right thing for example which it never does of course <laughs> No one, no one ever found fulfillment in vegetables. <laughs> or chocolate cake. Uh, there is no substance and also no emptiness or nothingness. Yes, nothing is really and isn't nothing. Yes, exactly. It's not that there is some mysterious nothing with a capital N. What happens? That's just what apparently happens. And that's just not something. Yes. And that's also when I say there is no absolute reality, even if you call it emptiness or nothingness, or the person will still assume this to be some kind of a circumstance, which is different from sitting in, sitting in front of a screen. And there just is no such thing at all. Yeah, there is no substance. And it is, sitting in front of a screen which doesn't have any substance which is not substantial at all so even when there is no one left desires still appear for no one well yes and no that's a, that's a weird thing with desires. Maybe I'm not really clear on the exact definition because for the person desires, it's my impression at least, is always connected to the idea or the need to have them fulfilled. One could almost say that's what turns a desire into a desire for the person. This, this need of, I have to have this fulfilled, otherwise, I can't live, I can't be, I won't be fulfilled, I will suffer and stuff. So in that sense, there are no desires when there is no one, because nothing is needed anymore for one's own fulfillment. I mean, not that it was needed before, but there is the illusion that, that what happens, my wishes or my feelings or what I want, are somehow need to be answered in order for me to be a fulfilled I. And this completely drops. So in that sense, there are no desires left, but there are definitely feelings that, that the person would regard as desires. Let's put it like this, strong feelings. Yeah. Lust. Yes. Chocolate cake. <laughs> But no desire in that sense. Yeah. Or desire in the way the person would regard it, this, this need to have this fulfilled. That that collapses. But all of it is not really conscious. It's not that there is someone, for example, not eating the chocolate cake or whatever, you know, um, or having a salad or whatever. There's not that someone consciously doesn't eat the cake because there is no desire for it. So they could just be eating that stuff, but it wouldn't be underlined with this illusion that it's needed for my fulfillment. So in that sense, apparently anything can happen. There would just this illusion not being there that it, that it has to happen for my fulfillment. 
because nothing has to happen. Nothing does happen for a reason, and certainly nothing has to happen. There's no need in anything, really. Sitting in front of us, sitting here and having this conversation, um, it doesn't have to be that way. There's no need in it. It just is that way for no reason. And the only dream would be that it has to be for some reason. Because I need to hear this, because Andreas needs, because I need to see, to say those words, because wholeness needs this to happen, or because there are natural laws, this has to be exactly why it is, because there has been evolution for 13 billion years or whatever. No, it just is as it is for no reason at all and without any purpose and all that stuff. Well, it's no thing anyway, it, it, it isn't even really. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I should tell you, do you like chocolate cake or, well, I think that's uh, some vague memory only that I, I take as an example, you know. <laughs> I don't have that much uh, actually. Since the desire, since the desire dropped, <laughs> there seems to be less of it in my life. <laughs> uh, Brussels sprout? Question mark. Yeah, I've heard of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it is Würsing or Rosenkohl. It's both not really on my list, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs>
Andreas. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I'm not really keen on being recorded and put on YouTube, but I'm kind of used to it because all the other speakers do that like all the time. So, but speaking of YouTube, uh, I was on YouTube the other day and, you know, they recommend things. And since I'm always on these non-duality videos, they recommended another non-duality thing about freedom. Hmm. And this, this guy that I've never heard of before, who's apparently has Zoom meetings and whatever, and uh, he's a spiritual teacher of some kind and was going on and on about how there's no free will, there's no choice, no one can choose who they are. But then the way to be free is to know that I am, like, you know, with capital letters, right? And it, it's, I was like, oh my God. Because <laughs> it just seems like the whole problem, at least with me and my life here, is that knowing that I am. Like, if I didn't know that I am, it's like that, it's just, it seems like I'm trying to forget who I am. If I just forget that I am, it's like mm. so much better, right? Without all this self stuff, like the, all the self-consciousness and self-awareness and self-knowledge that's taught, it just seems like that's just perpetuating the suffering. So I don't know. Oh, uh, oh yes, absolutely. Oh, it's, uh, it's someone. Um, presenting a concept and presenting an answer and yeah there's a of course i am is the illusion and i on the one hand that is well i shouldn't say this too loud because it's an illusion but i am is the suffering and on the other hand that is what's completely inexistent yeah i'm oh, i'm what totally he on board was, what that. he was suggesting is just another concept i mean yeah there is no doer so the idea that anyone can know that there is no doer is a doing it is pointing to a doer yeah and i and i get stuck in this loop of trying to somehow get rid of myself right which i think is a common thing in this little non-duality circle <laughs> well, which would be the uh, same I, I, loop of course yeah i just feel like oh i'm responsible for my liberation so to speak like if i could just do the right thing or i think the right thing or whatever yes it's like oh my gosh there's so much pressure oh well of course yes the, that is the pressure that the person is living in on the one yeah. hand i'm responsible for my surviving at least but actually i'm responsible for much more namely my fulfillment yeah it's like uh just stuck in the loop again oh. yeah no oh well oh well <laughs> there's no one in the loop ah, i like that ah, yeah. it's just looping <laughs> <laughs> okay that's all i've got i'll let somebody else take over now thank you uh, thank you thanks thanks Yeah, I know. There was also a kind of a, a, a non-dual teacher in Germany who also who was also teaching that uh, you can somehow deeply understand that you are not the doer, and then this will will set you free. This will be your liberation when you notice that you just am, but that you are not doing things. Usually, there comes a bit of this watcher thing in. You you can. You are only watching or stuff, but well, that would make you free if you can understand that you are not the doer. But that's not what this message is saying. Because that's a funny thing. The person can can actually understand, not in its direct experience, because as I said, even in knowing this, there is some kind of doing involved. But of course, you can get all kinds of uh, methods and techniques like look back on your day or look back on your life even and ask yourself, what have you really decided and all those things, all with the, uh, all with the attempt to bring you to the conclusion that, yeah, that's right, I didn't decide a lot actually. And, so, and the person can kind of understand that for a moment, of course. So that's where this teaching comes from, but it's just personal stuff again.
It's just trying to teach a person something which can't be taught or known. And of course, it remains a teaching. You say sometimes, it's just this, being you, being me, don't know if possible. Yes, and I will say this sometimes, but I don't mean to the experience of being you and me. So, but that's just what apparently happens, your body, this body, this circumstance. So that's just what apparently happens. But there's no experience of being that. That would be dreamt. And of course, it's not something that can be done or needs to be done. I think there is also this, this um, I don't know if it's a book title or something from this Indian uh, guy, Guru Ramana. He was saying, be yourself or something. So in the end, that's already happening. It's not something that one can do or needs to do. I mean, the person would see this as, an, as, a, as a teaching, as something one needs to do or can somehow do, be oneself or be yourself. But it's just, it's, it's already happening, apparently, so to speak. For no one, of course, but it's not something that, that can be done at all or needs to be done at all. Andreas? Yes. So <laughs> I'm walking now, I can talk. Um, I, yeah, along the lines of it's already happening. I was at a um, retreat at this yoga center and it just struck me. I was walking up to this the guest cottage door and they had this sign, breathe, relax, observe. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, it just was like, <laughs> you know, in the past, before hearing this message, I would have been, oh, yes, I have to breathe and relax and observe. <laughs> and Oh, what a great thing they put these reminders around. And I was just cracking up laughing. This is like, yeah, who is there <laughs> to breathe and relax and observe? Anyway, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good in the beginning, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes. that's how that's how the person lives Ooh, it's all fine it's all fine <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's what they would call a spiritual life <laughs> Breathe. It's off. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> it's probably not how. It's probably not how they see themselves in their story. But it's basically what they are doing. <laughs> or even on top of it, it's not my fault. I'm just watching. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the doer. Whew. Yeah, some people would probably call it that's the highest teaching or something. Just observe and breathe. Uh, that should stop now. <laughs> okay. There's a question in the chat. Um, the detached witness, unity consciousness, that's as far as the process apparently goes. But that's only a me that thinks it's only looking or is one with everything. Still, uh, still in the dream, isn't it? Ah, yes, one could say so. Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. It's just an, a, another personal experience. Yeah, a witness. I mean, the thing is, the person already experiences itself as kind of detached. Another word would be separation. I'm separate from, also is kind of detached from. 
but as in many teachings, uh, the person takes itself as an answer. So they say the answer might be if you are that consciously, <laughs> if you are the witness consciously, this will make you consciously free. But yeah, it's just another experience. It's advertising for another experience saying, if you are like this, then you'll be fine and happy. If you are like the witness, then you will be free. I mean, the opposite would be actually the total creator, the doer of everything, which is also a spiritual, the, that would be, would be the other side of the coin. You can create everything, you are responsible for every thought and every feeling. And if you are totally conscious, you can choose every moment, what you feel, what you think. You are the creator of your reality. This would be the other side of the coin. Both are dreamt, of course. In a very funny way, both imply the other thing. So being the detached, the detached witness, again, needs effort and doing. While the one who, who believes to be able to create its re, his or her reality, of course, also wants to just observe and enjoy the results. So both teachings actually imply the other part witnessing and doing. And yes, uh, someone writes exhausting. Yes, that's what it is. Yes, to be, to be me is apparently exhausting. Yes. Yeah. Greetings to Down Under actually. <laughs> Guten Tag, yeah. There's probably <laughs> just had an idea with this uh, witness thing. Probably if you have done too much, too much uh, crap in your life, <laughs> you want to become the witness. <laughs> but if, <laughs> if nothing worked out, really, you may find uh, comfort in the idea of being a creator, that you can create uh, something. Just joking. Yes, I'm um, Kathy. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Hi, Andreas. Hi. Um, I just wanted to, um, you know, I always, uh, the, the, the me thinks when uh, the experiencer drops and there's no more experience, somehow things are better. <laughs> yes. You know, there's no. And there's not going to be, you know, the highs and lows, you know. Yes, and underlying with the sense is not only it's better, but of course it's better for me. Though conceptually I understand that I'm not there anymore then, but of course there will be something that knows that it's better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's very hard to um you know uh impossible. i guess you can't i guess it's impossible it's impossible exactly yeah impossible. yeah yeah because even this picture this concept starts with an illusion namely that you are here now or that right. there is someone now here right right who yeah. then could drop or that there is experiencing now and that experiencing can still drop later on that's all yeah. dreamt. 
Well, you know, and I've often heard other speakers say, you know, um, everything's still there, all the emotions and uh, whether they're high or low, everything's still there. The kind and, of, yes, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah, it's just unfathomable. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. the thing. It's, it's it can't be comprehended how having emo or feelings or how there can be feelings without yeah. creating the impression of highs and lows, for example. Yeah. Or yeah. How there can with be feelings without there being someone experiencing them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's that's the dilemma. <laughs> anyway. It just, yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah, exactly. The person wants usually to get rid of the feelings in order to yes. have a flat and stable experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Well, by the way, it's the other way around. The feelings stay, but well, the person turns out to be illusory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Yes, uh, you have your hand still up. I don't know if you want to say something, just do so. If not, yeah, thanks. Yes, please. Andreas, um, Nizza Gadata of I Am That fame spoke about resting in the I Am for a year and then he achieved whatever it was, the ultimate detachment. I, 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 do you, what do you think he was pointing at with that? Well, I think, well, I think um, that this can happen within a story, but it's not a teaching. Unfortunately, he turned it into a teaching. Well, at least for a while. I think at the end of his life, he skipped that teaching, this idea that you can rest in the I am. But I think this can just happen for some people that they know to, it's like living in a state of um, being awareness and not believing one's own story anymore. And I think that this can just happen for no, so it's for not no really. real reason. Oh, it's not real, of course, no. Yeah, but it's not, it's not pointing to this. Well, what, what would be pointing to this apparently is the, the, the turning out that this is illusory too, this I am, to be in a state of I am. It's not a step, it's not a tool, it's not a path. It's still part of the dream of I am. But well, I know, but I'm just guessing. Or well, no, I'm I know that it's part of, of the traditional, I don't know, Advaita culture, or I'm not really there yet, that there is like a path, and that there is and one step on that path is to be pure awareness or to rest as pure awareness. And they even teach that. They tell you, if you are in that state, this will bring you closer. 
my impression is that 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 or not my impression that is part of the dream this state is the same illusion it's another it's the same personal experience and it's the same illusion so diff different to the being that some speakers talk about well because it's it sounds it's so close to being do you know well, but my impression also is that most speakers, when they talk about being, they actually refer to this state <laughs> because yeah, this state yeah. feels like pure being. Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But what I'm guessing is maybe that out of the culture, out of this culture, this idea that it just happened for some people, that there is, that they have been a life. In a, in a time in their life where they couldn't believe their story anymore and they're just the experience of presence what's much more in the foreground right then yeah. it collapsed but as yes. i say it's never a tool or a method it's never something that one can or one needs to do it would just have been what apparently happens but they could have fallen away but still have been under the impression that that was the path that sort of led to that? Actually, I don't think so. I don't see how this is possible. Yeah. But maybe they've just told their story and afterwards it, uh, the seeker turned it into a path. I don't know. I mean, not right. with Physica Data because seemingly he published three books <laughs> where, he, <laughs> where he advertised for this method. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, mm. Oh. But my, my, as far as I know, he couldn't keep it up. Yep. When when physical death came closer, he couldn't keep up this idea anymore. Right. That, that that's a path or a step or a tool. Yeah. And that there is someone who needs to do that or can do that even. <clears throat> Well, this was all last century, you know. <laughs> when when time was slower. <laughs> okay, I received half a question. Even though there is no path for yeah. So maybe you clicked too early. I mean, in a way, well, in a way, you know what what usually happens when there is someone, there is consciousness. I am plus a story. And of course, when you when you when you say that there is death, for example, you could say. There is me and the story, and then the story drops, and then there's just the pure beingness, and then death, the actual death would be when even the sense of beingness drops away. So that's a, that's a, a story. Uh, that's how the person would experience. But it doesn't need someone who does do that. It's just what apparently happens. And of course, in dying, it can all just go like this. One doesn't have to rest for five years in a state of pure awareness. It can just, apparently in a story, it can just collapse in an instant. Okay, even though there is no path, it appears that many speakers of this message were seeking vigorously prior to, yes. Well, yes, I understand. That's what apparently happens or happened. <laughs> um, uh, honestly, <laughs> I didn't stay for a year in uh, pure awareness. <laughs> oh, and uh, well, yeah. Uh, uh, honestly, it's just what apparently happens. On the other hand, you will never find someone who was not a seeker. Of course, every me is a seeker and every me somehow seeks with a strong intention, maybe not in spirituality. And I, I know what you mean, 
there are a lot of speakers who have sought in spirituality before, understand, but still, it's just what apparently happens. And it doesn't say that you should go on seeking, because that's what the seeker concludes from this. The seeker would exactly conclude the opposite from what's being said here, so to speak. The seeker would say, Andreas, you were seeking spiritually. This means that I need to go on seeking spiritually as well. Oh, no, not at all. Exactly not. There is no one. Okay, the separate me, uh, okay. Um, the dropping is without conditions. Yes, absolutely. Everything is unconditional. And so is the apparent appearance of the illusion and the apparent death of the illusion. So it's all unconditional, how it is. And then there's just an openness. Yes. All right. <coughs> okay, question. Could it be that the seeking is just the death struggle of the me, sugarcoated as seeking <laughs> for a lofty goal? Well, yes, of course. I mean, one could put it like this, but it's both. It's a life struggle, which is, of course, also the struggle to not die, the attempt to not die before one has found. Oh, yeah, of course. So it's the same. The, the seeking is the attempt to survive as a me, to survive this moment as a me in order to arrive in a fulfilled future. Of course. So it's life struggle, death struggle, whatever. And it's exactly what the person also states. If there are intense feelings, for example, the person asks, how can I survive this? What can I do in order to stand this feeling or this situation? How can I, how, how should I be in order to survive this situation? Should I be present? Should I just observe it? Should I, because if I don't do anything, this situation or totality or wholeness might just swallow me or the intense feeling, for example, would just um, overwhelm me, which from the person's view would just appear as death. Yeah, of course. So that's what, all the attempt to remain present is, or to control, to survive this moment, to be able to maybe arrive in the next moment and hopefully find something there. Yeah. And what this message points to that this experience, this, this experience to be something that's alive, a me that's alive, is completely dreamt. It's an artificial struggle for an artificial life. And as we said, in the end, the least thing is I have to survive this moment. And the best thing that could happen is if I can take, if this moment even gives me something, or if I can enjoy it, or yeah, get something from it. But the least thing that I need to do is to survive it somehow. Uh, yes. Um, you know, you cannot compare any path because there is no path really. I mean, if people who have had a spiritual practice and in and apparently died, and then, then they look back and say, you know, I did this and this and this. Um, but people who never had any teaching and never just just dropped like that, then they would with they're looking back saying, no, I never meditated, so don't meditate. This is the same thing. So yeah. then the conclusion is not dropping anything, or you get there because there's nothing to get and you cannot compare paths or apparent paths. And Absolutely. Yes. Apparently, every life is unique and apparently every death. Totally. Absolutely. I think with Nizagadatta Maharaj, I don't know the books, but I saw a video on YouTube and uh, he told his students uh, that the whole ritual, the Indian, the Hindu ritual is crap. It's bullshit. But then he's doing this exactly the same thing with his family and he's doing all this puja stuff. This is just like Andreas celebrating Christmas and writing a book that there is no Christmas. I mean, this is really, it's really, he, he was such a Hindu, you cannot, and he knew completely that this was all 
class. I mean, yes. So uh, I think I don't know. I think he's nice. I like him. Just watch him and doing his his. Oh, stuff. me too. Me too. But, but I think he's, that... he's uh, offering to the gods and he's doing the whole. Uh, yeah, but I think. Thing, yeah. Yeah, but I think the videos that you see on YouTube is also, how would you say it, the, the later Nisagata. <laughs> it's not from the time when he wrote I am that. I mean, I guess he was cool back then also, but those those popular books, I am that, they are definitely a teaching. But as I said in the last years, he, he couldn't keep up that anymore. Yeah, but, but I also think he didn't wrote the book to write the book. So, that's possible, yeah, that's possible. Yeah. I mean, this is just this, the, the Westerners who were greedy for some teaching and and also the tradition of in India where this is taught like that. So, Absolutely, yeah, yeah but I, mean, I, I nowadays, it is not comparable to these teachers now who all try to get their foot in the in the market and the, on the spiritual yeah. market. So he didn't, didn't intend to. Oh, no, of course. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, um, yeah, I'm totally with you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. So I think that's it. Um, whoever wants to join tomorrow so of course sorry last last question is it also the hate well yes hate is what apparently happens yes or what seemingly happens yes totally yeah all right so um tomorrow there'll be a, a, a zoom with chinese translation but uh, everyone is welcome to join uh, this one and then it'll just be next week again on uh, Tuesday. And of course, everyone is welcome to donate. Um, apart from that, no, apart from that, there is nothing to do. No, there is no one. There is no message. There's no teaching. There's just what apparently happens. And that's naturally how and complete. There is no separation. There is no one separate. There is no separate awareness. It's an illusion. It's a dream, meaning it does not happen. In the end, not even as a dream. That's always a bit weird when you talk about those paths and what happened before liberate, because those things never happen. A separate person, a separate entity never happens. It never happened and it doesn't happen now. There is no one. There's just this, and it's ordinary, and it's total and whole and complete. Thank you very much for joining. I wish you a lovely day. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thanks, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye.